It's just such a contrast between the song and the silence. It's beautiful. It's sudden and beautiful and noticeable. All right. Well, if you've been with us this month, either here in the sanctuary or online, and if you've been following the trend of the conversation, then you may have noticed that in recognition of Father's Day in June, which was just last Sunday, uh, all this month, we have been focusing on the source of all life, the divine creator, God energy, love energy, spiritual energy, as our father, as the one father of all. That makes us one with all of creation. We are one cosmic family expressing in infinite ways. As we said last Sunday, there is one God, the Father, from whom comes everything and by whom we live. We're each a loved child created, fathered by love itself, created to create together all that is good and beautiful and holy and nothing else. Without the divine spirit, holy creative vibration, love energy that sources the universe in which we live with unlimited goodness and well-being, nothing in this world, nothing would ever come into forms we can physically see, including us. But here we are, in human form, courtesy of the divine within us, and nothing else. Here we are with holy attributes from one divine Father and from no one else. Science of Mind tells us that each of us is an individualized center of God consciousness. Our personality is the use we make of our divine individuality. God consciousness is the consciousness of life. The consciousness of all that is. The consciousness of life being life. We are an individualized center in God consciousness. And that makes us conscious of being alive. It doesn't get any more personal and intimate than that. What God said to Moses so long ago is eternally true of all that exists. I am that I am. God is what we are, no matter what we may think we are. Without God consciousness, which is everywhere, we wouldn't be conscious that we are right here, being the one that we think we are. The only thing that we know for sure is that we are us, ourself, wherever we are. What we are in truth, even in this world, is what God is knowing us to be. But what we seem to be in this world to ourself is what we say we are. Introvert or extrovert, sensitive or unaware, the life of the party or a wallflower, confident or not, worthy or not. All that we say and believe about ourself forms our human personality, which is how we are making use in this very moment 
of our divine individuality. Now, if we were to look within us at the self that seems to be us most of the time, the one that's the result of all of our past experiences, and if we were to look around us at the world that appears as it does to us, a world that often seems to reflect to us so much that appears to be ungodlike, we may wonder what in the world God had in mind when he was creating it all. How could it be that the limited self we often think we are as we live in a world where we feel vulnerable to all the chaos that seems to be happening every day in some way, how could the world with us in it with all the crazy, confused thoughts that seem to go through everyone's mind, with all the worries and concerns and ailments and disasters and conflicts going around, how on earth could all of this have come into being from the being we call God? There's an old story about three baseball umpires discussing how they make their calls. And the first umpire said, I call them as I see them. And the second umpire said, I call them as they are. And the third umpire said, they ain't nothing until I call them. Which brings us to the title of today's talk, It's Your Call. Everything that seems to be to us is what we say it is to us. Pure God consciousness, the pure positive source energy of life is unlimited in its potential to take form, and yet it's formless. We are in our restful, peaceful, joyous state of being an individualized center of that God consciousness, filled with unlimited potential to express ourself in form. And yet nothing, no thing, takes form for us until we become conscious of something, of something, like a thought in our mind. That's why we find peace when we free our mind of its focus on thoughts. That's what we do in meditation. That's what we could do by choosing to look beyond the worldly appearance of things created by human thoughts so that we can perceive what God had in mind. The spiritual, mystical teacher Muji wrote, we are the space in which thoughts appear, play, and dissolve like clouds drifting in an infinite sky. When we become conscious of something, some thought in our mind, it's like a cloud that we can choose to focus on and feel happy about, or we can choose to focus on and feel bad about, or we can let pass by without giving any meaning to it. But often, when a thought comes to mind that would be good if we just let it pass by, 
We hold it in place with our curiosity. We want to know where it came from and why that thought came to our mind and what it means and what it's trying to say to us when it means nothing until we call it something. In his book, Cat's Cradle, Kurt Vonnegut reflected on the myth of Adam and Eve that many believe is true. He wrote, and God said, let us make living creatures out of mud so the mud can see what we have done. And God created every living creature that now moveth, and one was man. Mud as man alone could speak. And God leaned close as mud as man, sat up, looked around, blinked, and spoke. What is the purpose of all this? He asked politely. Everything must have a purpose, asked God. Certainly, said man. Then I leave it to you to think of one for all this. And we've been trying to think of one ever since. Through religion, which often causes more confusion and conflict in our mind and in the world. Through science, which often tells us a fact is true and reliable until it discovers something new that makes the previous fact unreliable and obsolete. Joseph Campbell wrote, it is a waste to be asking the question when you are the answer. Life has no meaning. Each of us has meaning, and we bring it to life. We have the meaning that God has infused in us. We are created to create. The thoughts we give value to in our mind, we bring to life as our perception of life. We create with them. The thoughts we focus on because we value them cause a life to seem as it does to us. Nothing means anything to us until we give it meaning for us. We just can't relate otherwise. Anna Neen, a wonderful, prolific author, wrote, there is not one big cosmic meaning for all. There is only the meaning we each give to our life, an individual meaning, an individual plot, like an individual novel, a book for each person. All that we individually give meaning to takes form in our life as we think and we are thinking all the time. And it becomes what we see in life. We see our own creations. Whether we're aware that we are seeing the thoughts in our mind in form in the world, or we think that the forms we see around us are separate from our mind. What we see is what we believe is there and nothing else. We have to believe it to see it. When we observe what we see, we decide. Well, we're going to think about it, or if we're going to think about it, and how we're going to feel about how we're thinking about it. As long as we're conscious, we're alive, we're creating 
our life experiences, through the meaning we bring to the moments of our life. In order to have experience, we must have meaning. If we're stressed and we're worried, it's because we've forgotten that we are the artist of consciousness. Our picture of reality is uniquely ours because it happens within us through the use we make of our individualized center of God consciousness. Our life creation has only our signature on it. And it's not affected by what anyone else thinks about it unless we give critical energy, value, and meaning and allow it to affect what we create. We're free to make our life beautiful and colorful and peaceful and joyful and fulfilling by deciding that's what life means to us. We can make it a full-on drama by deciding that's what life means to us. Or we can make it drab and colorless and fearful and unhappy and unfulfilling by deciding that's the way life is. Einstein wrote, the single most important decision any of us will ever make is whether or not to believe that the universe is friendly. It's our call. No one but us thinks inside our individual mind. We're the creator of our own perspective of life. No one else perceives life through our personality or can bring meaning to what we see but us. Now, we may have allowed others to influence how we see life. Maybe in the past, maybe we're allowing others to influence our perspective now. But it was and is a choice, not a life sentence. And we can let thoughts that no longer serve our greatness and our freedom and our expansion to pass like clouds in an infinite sky. Our perception of the world is a reflection of our state of consciousness now. It's important for us to remind ourselves, as often as we need to, that we are not separate ever from what we see. That no one and no thing can appear the way it does to us unless it's already within our individual consciousness. Our consciousness is like a clear, infinite sky in which there's unlimited visibility to see what God has in mind. All we perceive as everything and everyone all that we're sure exists as real and true is filtered through the use our personality is making of our divine individuality. Every moment, our individual consciousness creates the world we inhabit. 
and it brings meaning to what we see. We get to decide if the world we inhabit is good or bad, happy or sad, friendly or unfriendly, because nothing is anything until we call it something. Namaste. All right. Always happy to make a sports analogy. Okay. Well, this is the time of our service. Huh. When we just get to say thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for just showing up, being the love that you are. It's a beautiful thing. And thank you for finding us this morning live. Thank you for finding us on video at whatever point you find us. Just thank you for finding us. Thank you for caring about our message, about the Life Enrichment Center and what we have to offer the world. And for us to continue offering our message in the way that we do requires your financial support. So thank you to all of you who support us. That's why we're here in these human forms, speaking the truth that is formless. And if you're wondering how to support us, if you haven't, if you're wondering how to support us because you forgot, if you're just wondering or you just want to hear our treasurer run through it because she's so good at it, then our treasurer, Dr. Jamie Phillips, is making her way down the aisle. And she's here to tell us how to do that. <laughs> Ooh. All right. No hitter today. How about it? <laughs> Wasn't that a good talk? Yeah. It's my call. I love it when it's my call. It's the best. Okay. If you would like to donate to the Life Enrichment Center today, there's several ways you can do it if you're online. You can go to our Facebook page facebook.com forward slash Life Enrichment Center and hit the donate button. You can go to our website, lecflint.com and hit the donate button. You can go to PayPal and our email address for PayPal is uh, Life Enrichment Center. No, that's our, <laughs> that's our, we're going to go to the post office box first. <laughs> post office box is Life Enrichment Center, P.O. Box 321294, Flint, Michigan, 48532. And if you'd like to donate via PayPal, it's lec2512 at gmail.com. All right. And while we're here we're in the sanctuary, we're going to take an offertory while we listen to Jason Phillips, Marcia Allen, and Larry Mandeville in the house. Woo! Doing grateful. Thank you. <laughs> 